Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Today we're going to be talking about soap dough. If you've seen some of my videos before, you'll know that I use soap dough in quite a number of my soaps. And the most common question that I get asked in the comments to my videos is, how do you make soap dough? Now this video is not going to be about how to make the individual little embeds and things that you can make with soap dough. I just want to talk about the process of how I make my soap dough and the basics of using it and storing it to keep it in the best condition. I don't use a special recipe for my soap dough. I literally just use my normal core recipe from all of the soaps that I make. Now if you're just starting out with soap dough, I suggest you do the same and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. However, if perhaps you're not happy with your own recipe and it doesn't seem to work very well, or maybe you just get bitten by the soap dough bug and you want to get involved in it in a lot more, the place you need to go to find a huge amount of detail is sorcery soaps. I'm going to try and give you a nice straightforward introduction about how to get going and get yourself started, but B at Sorcery Soaps is the queen of everything soap dough. You can buy some fantastic ready-made soap dough from B, and she does ship worldwide. B has also written a number of absolutely beautiful books that give loads of information about everything soap dough, including lots of recipes. And she also has a blog with over 300 posts and lots of free recipes on her website. Come on, let's go make some soap dough. So I'll typically get my soap dough in one of two ways. Firstly, I might specifically make up a batch of soap dough. I might choose to make a selection of colours or just one colours. And this will just depend on the soaps that I've maybe got planned coming up or maybe I just want to restock some colours so I've always got them available. Now I've mentioned that I always use my own specific recipe. I never buy in soap dough and um, I've never used anyone else's recipe for it. There's nothing wrong with doing that and certainly I would advise doing that if you're unsure about making soap dough um, and you want to make sure you get some good results. The reason I only use my own recipe is twofold really and both reasons are based on the fact that I'm based in the UK. So the first of those just literally being cost to get it to me. Although it can be shipped worldwide, by the time I've paid for transport costs and then all the import duties and tax that we have to pay, it would actually make it really quite expensive. And secondly, and probably the most important factor, is that in the UK we are very tightly regulated if we want to sell any of our cosmetic products. We have to get cosmetic assessments on any soaps that we want to make and once we have those we're not allowed to change our recipe or our formulas at all unless we pay for another assessment to be done. So therefore if I try to use a different recipe or if I try to buy some soap dough in I wouldn't be allowed to sell it unless I paid for a new assessment and that would actually be quite a tricky thing to do if I was trying to merge two different types of recipe into one assessment. So as I said previously have a go using your own recipe first of all just because if you can use that, then that's great and it's lovely and easy, isn't it? But if you find it doesn't really work or you don't like doing it, I've already laid out the best places where you can get some help, some free recipes or even buy soap dough in yourself. So as you can see, as I've been going on a bit there, I've bought a batch of soap batter up to a really quite decent trace. Now I've actually got two amounts here. I've just coloured them in the colours that I want and they're literally just ready now to be put and set to saponify. Now for me the most important factor in getting successful soap dough is to stop 
any air or certainly as much air as possible getting to your soap batter. So I'm going to let my soap saponify in some little plastic tubs and as you can see here I'm wrestling with some cling wrap to try and get it in the tubs. Now I put the cling wrap in purely just because it's easier to then get the soap dough out afterwards and also that will give me an extra barrier against any air. If I'm making up some soap dough I'll never just leave it in a cup or in one of those paper beakers or anything like that. It's just not good enough for keeping the air out and stopping your soap dough drying out. So once my little pots are prepared I'm just going to scrape the batter that I've made into them and then tuck all the plastic in and seal them. And then I'll just do the same for the other colour. Now the other way I'll get soap dough is maybe some extras that I've had from a soap I've made. So this was a landscape soap that I did where I did a sculpted layer. So that excess I'm just going to pop again into a small plastic tub and squash it all down, cover it up and then leave it to saponify. So when I set my soap dough off to saponify, I will just leave it on the side. I don't try and get it to force through gel. The only soap dough colour I do try and gel is my black, just so I get a nice strong black. However, I do find that when I've done that, it does have a slightly weird texture to it and it's a little harder to get it to work right and get it to the consistency you want. So I guess it's a little bit of a, a balancing act there. Now I do typically unmould my soap dough about 24 hours later. Now what you've got to bear in mind if you're doing this is the saponification process hasn't yet finished. So therefore you could easily leave these in your mould as long as they're beautifully sealed for you know three or even four days. That's going to be fine but you've got to make sure there isn't any air getting to them. If you unmold like me after 24 hours, please do make sure that you're wearing your gloves because as I said, the saponification process won't have completely finished until sort of day three. So next we have the very important smushing stage. Okay, smushing is a technical term for smushing your soap dough. So literally all you're going to do is get your soap dough. It can be quite hard to break apart but it shouldn't be um, grainy. It shouldn't be crumbly or anything like that because if you've kept the air away from it it should be nice and soft. And now what you're going to do is just manipulate it and smush it all around. Mine typically at 24 hours is already quite a nice consistency. It's not sticky or anything horrible. If you do find yours is really sticky, then you'll probably best put it back a little bit and let it sit a little bit longer before you try and do anything to it. Also, you might find sometimes that soap toe is a little bit of a sort of self healer. I have had a batch in the past where I've taken it out of the mold and as I've gone to start the smushing, it, it has been a little bit crumbly and a bit weird on the outside. So all I've done is then wrapped it back up and sealed it and left it again for another two or three days and then gone back to it. And because that moisture sort of equalized throughout the soap dough, it's then turned into lovely soap dough anyway. Okay, so don't give up on something if it's not initially great. So when I'm happy that my soap dough is nice and pliable and there's no lumps and bumps or any hard bits in it, I'll then do a final smush to put it all together. And what I'm trying to do here is just make sure it's as compact as possible. I want a nice smooth ball with no cracks in it or anything like that because I want to make sure that I'm not getting any air to it. Now here I'm taking advantage of a vacuum seal container that I've got and I find this really useful when I've got smaller bits and pieces that I haven't got nice sealable lids from. So then in that case I'll cover them with a bit of cling wrap, pop them in my vacuum seal container and suck all the air out and then leave them to saponify. I could have probably done with some cling wrap on the bottom of these little pots 
But um, these were just the little bits of soap batter that I had left over from when I did my water discount video. So those were just the pots I tested some colours and things in. So I've now just let that saponify and turn into soap dough. So as you can see, it's basically the same process each time. Let it saponify, give it a good old squashing and a smushing around and keep it wrapped as much as you possibly can. And as you can see, I will typically use my excess batter to turn it into soap dough for other projects rather than making random extra bars of soap because I really have no use for those. So now in theory you could actually start to use your soap dough but I do always prefer to put it away for a week or so if you possibly can or even longer. Right then you lot, question time. Let's see if you've been listening. What should you do to make sure your soap dough lasts a nice long time? Keep it in the fridge. Drink wine and eat chocolate on a regular basis. Or don't let any air get to it. Now I know it could be a tough choice between those last two options, but if you've been listening, hopefully you picked the last one. Now the second one, well, let's face it, if you did it a lot, you probably won't care what your soap dough looks like anyway. Okay, so we've got to find a way of keeping the air off of our soap dough. I vacuum seal mine. I have a food saver vacuum machine. Now there's lots of different types and you can get them really quite cheaply or you can get a more expensive model like this. I also use the food saver resealable bags as well because you can just keep on reusing them. Now I don't have a separate vacuum sealer for my soap, there's no need for it. The vacuum sealer never touches the soap, so it's perfectly fine to use your one from your kitchen, no problem at all. And the reason why I like using the vacuum sealer is because the bags are nice and tough, the seals stop any air getting into your soap dough at all, and also there's a clear indicator. When the bag is vacuumed tight against the soap, you can see you've got a nice airtight seal. If for any reason that seal should break and air gets in, again it's very easy to see that because the bag isn't as tight against the soap. So I'll seal all of my soap dough up. I do also make sure I label all of my soap dough just when it was made, um, what recipe, mine's always the same. But especially if there was anything like some fragrance oil, if it was like an overpour from a batch of soap that I made. Okay, so when it's time to use your soap dough, you're going to unwrap it and hopefully it stayed nice and air free. And what you're looking for is your soap dough should be should be reasonably stiff. You don't want it to just be like mush. It will be quite firm for you to manipulate, but it should feel lovely and smooth. It may take a little bit of more smushing to get it nice and smooth, but it should be nice and smooth. If it will roll nicely and stay sort of always shiny on the outside then that's great and also when you squeeze it you don't want it crumbling you don't want it cracking so all of those types of things to me make it a good soap dough now if your soap dough is a little bit sticky you can always leave it out of its wrapping for a little while to firm up a fraction or you can use some corn flour, um, I think you call it corn starch in the US to help with any sticking that you've got. Now before you do anything with your soap dough, it is important as we say to get it nice and pliable again and also the bits that you're going to be using, trying to make sure that they're just one nice solid piece of soap dough. You don't want any cracks, you don't want any joins or anything because that will ruin whatever it is you're trying to model. Now I'm not going to go through actual modelling techniques in this video because obviously when I do make anything out of soap dough I always include it in the videos as I make them. But what I thought I would do is just give you a little bit of information about um, using an extruder for your soap dough because I do use that as a tool quite a lot and I, often in a video I don't really have time to go over that in detail. 
So this is my extruder. Well, the box from it, a Fimo Professional. Um, I'm not really sure what's professional about it. It's fairly similar to a lot of extruders that are available. And you get the extruder itself and a number of discs. Now the extruder is basically a metal tube. You put a shaped disc at the end so you can form a pattern with your soap dough in our case. And then you have sort of like a screw type set up on the other end with a plunger and that forces the soap dough through the extruder. Now there seems to be a standard set of discs. When I was looking for an extruder I looked at all sorts of them and they all seem to have very very similar discs and for our purposes with soap I do find that the discs are perhaps a little bit boring and some of them not particularly useful because the holes are so tiny that we would never use them for soap but they're a good starter pack and obviously you need the actual extruder itself anyway. You can buy a limited number of additional discs and also you can get sort of like an extender that makes the extruder mouth and therefore the pattern that you can use slightly bigger. I don't have one of those so unfortunately I can't show you what it looks like. I do tend to make my own discs though and this is what we can see on the screen now. So all these sort of grey colour ones are ones that I've printed out with my 3D printer. But before I had that, I used to just use those, you know, fairly flexible chopping boards and cut some discs out of those. Um, it was pretty tough to do, um, but you could do it. And that's what those little green ones you can see are made from. And then in true MacGyver fashion, you can also attach piping tips to your extruder. If you get a metal washer to just shrink the diameter of that extruder hole, they'll fit in without falling out. And I've done this in the past when I've wanted a very small star that would be very difficult to cut out from some plastic or something. Now whilst we're just looking at a little bit of extruding, just a couple of things to mention. Firstly, always make sure that you've really smushed your soap dough up nicely and there are no cracks and things in it. If you've got cracks in your soap dough in the extruder, it can actually give you joins and breaks in the things that you extrude. And then secondly, Make sure you lay your extrusions out quickly so they dry nice and straight. And then as you initially cut them, always cut them slightly longer than you need because that little cut area will actually squash the soap dough a bit and it will lose some shape. So then you'll leave them to dry just a little while, maybe an hour or so, and then you can cut them and that shape will stay nice and crisp. And then just one final thing to leave you with, thinking about what happens when you've made something out of soap dough. For me, if I'm going to be using it that day, so within an hour or a couple of hours, I will just leave it sitting out in the open air. So it firms off a tiny bit so it doesn't get damaged when you put it into the mould and cover it with soap. Any longer than that, so for example, if I want an embed for the next day, I will then make sure that I cover it, perhaps wrap it in some film, or like you can see here, I'll take my little embeds and I'm going to put them into one of my vacuum seal containers and vacuum all the air out and leave them in there until I'm ready to use them. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you have, it would be great if you left me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comment section below. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!